welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I have just platinum Spider Man on the PS4, and it feels glorious. But seriously, you, you platinum it? Really? Yeah, in honesty, uh, <laughs> they set the bar pretty low in terms of uh, achievements. There's not like you must swing from one end of the city to the other without ever touching the ground. That would be a challenge. Oh my, well, so, oh wow, <laughs> you platinum. That, that's, that's surprising, it? Really. Um, congratulations, I guess. Thank you. Honestly, it's more fun because a friend of mine who's been saving it for Red Dead Redemption, he's all bitter because he wants to play Spider-Man as well. <laughs> so, of course, I, I tease him mercilessly. <laughs> uh, yes, tease him, tease him, yes. Oh, I am a good friend. Yes, you are. But anywho... So, uh, with all this video game talk, I have to make a confession to you guys. Oh, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Norman, you don't have to confess anything. All right? All right, all right. Let's just say that there was a goof in the schedule, and Sefi can't join us, so we're holding off on the Pokemans. Yeah, but I, I just need to tell the backstory. You, you think I should or should not? Like, I, 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 I'm an honest person, and I feel like I should tell people about things, but if you think I should not, I then I should not. I, I don't think we should tell them about why Sappy's absent. Oh, no. Sappy's absent because Sappy. Um, about my goof-ups. Okay. If you feel, but don't feel obligated. All right. You know, all right. But still, I feel like I want to. So, anyway, uh, for you guys at home, last week, or whenever this comes out, we promised that, hey, we're doing the Pokemon third movie review. Yay. Spoilers. And, you know, see, we already did. We recorded it. We had fun. We laughed out loud and stuff. <laughs> and, oh, uh, well, let's just say that Fear of going to the hospital made me not do my job right. And yeah, um, I forgot to save the last bit of the recording. And yeah, let's just say that uh, Pokemon review is going to hold off till next week. So yeah, quote unquote next week. I'm not sure when you're going to do it, depending on how everybody is. But still, this week or on this episode, we're going to do something special for you guys. Unplanned, unprepared discussion. And this week's discussion podcast is we're going to talk about stories in video games. Are they good? Are they bad? How are they in general? So, anywho, um, before we start, if you guys would like to put your share of ideas of what video game story you enjoy or think that are good, put them in the comments below. I would like to read them. But now, we start the discussion with our video game story good or bad i mean i personally feel they're 50 50 and it's debatable well for me once upon a time most video game stories were bad because they came on these little cartridges they just plugged in and played and when the game was bad you took them out and threw them across the room and they were fine <laughs> it was a golden age you know what i think that's the secret to anger management we need to bring back cartridges you could just throw <laughs> no but silver on in all honesty um Video games back in the days were pretty okay too. Like they have good stories. For example, is the first Final Fantasy, that was really good. RPGs had uh, good stories, but that was by necessity. You were asking people basically to play a Dungeons and Dragons style game without a story. You were just a guy pushing buttons on a chart. You'd be oh wow, spreadsheet the video game. <laughs> But also, okay, to counter that argument there, Silver, there's also Double Dragon, where you and your brother, uh, Bimi and Dimi, have to go and save your quote-unquote girlfriend from this bad guy. There's a story there. You mean the girlfriend that will date whoever beats up the other guy at the end? Yeah. If you play two-player in that game, you have to f at the end, you have to fight for the affections of this one girl, which I gotta say... That's pretty terrible. Yeah, but it's video games. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you do not get to make that dodge. <laughs> no, we cannot praise the video games and then defend the video games by saying, "Oh, it's a video game. Don't have expectations." Oh no, no. I, I, I ain't saying I ain't saying that it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's video games. Well, here's the thing: in video games, usually there is an abundance of damsels in distress because that's a shortcut to getting the story jump started. It's a very clear goal. It's a very uh, tangible conflict. And you can tell an ending. Very often, very often, uh, a lot of games were just, go rescue this person. And that's 
all the all the mode you really needed. It was very, very rare. I think Ninja Gaiden was one of the first games to really feature cutscenes to tell a story. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And also Double Dragon Two, if you remember right. That one I don't remember too well. Yeah, there's the one scene where the brothers need to jump to the helicopters and stuff. They show a bit of cutscenes. They show a bit, but it wasn't it didn't express a lot of characterization. That was at the time a little too advanced. But technology has opened things up. Now suddenly there's a lot more you can do. There's a greater experimentation, especially in the indie game scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see, what was... Uh, uh, there was a video game where you are uh, on Firewatch in a, in a national forest. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Uh, Firewatch, what was it called? <laughs> I forgot, but it has something to do with fire. Ah, fire, mm-hmm. fire. While you go look for that, I'll talk about the, well, my opinions. And, you know, honestly, video games and stories, it's kind of a, how do I put this, apple pie kind of situation where you mix together and you get good stuff, but all the ingredients need to be right. And in essence, if you screw one thing up, everything's going to be trash. And in all honesty, with stories in video games, sometimes it's, it don't really matter. Like, for example, um, Mass Effect, Mass Effect, tri- the, the trilogy. The first game was interesting. It had a really good story. Then you have part two, where the story was really awesome. And then part three, the ending was crap. Like, the ending <laughs> was disappointingly bad and stuff. But the journey to the ending was pretty okay. Did you find the game title, Silver? It is indeed Firewatch. Ah. It's mostly audio-driven, so the voice actors do a lot. Oh, and that's important. The introduction of voice acting. Mm. But voice acting came during the PlayStation 1 days. Like, if you remember Resident Evil, that game, compared to today's standards of video game, is considered a joke in how it looks. But people have to remember that the first Resident Evil was the catalyst for horror survival games to make people or to make people aware that you can create horrors in video games with uh, Dutch angles and uh, back camera angles and back controls and whatnot. So yeah, horror. Oh, but but voice acting started much earlier than that. Ah, yes, true that. Anyone who's ever dreaded the words, I hunger knows exactly what I'm talking about. And what was that on, Silva? But you don't know what I'm talking about. Sorry. Like... It's called Sinistar. Sinistar. It was a it was a very, very early video game uh, where basically you were flying a ship through space oh. and shooting up all these meteors. But then this giant creature, maybe a machine, maybe some sort of space demon, would appear and it would say, I am Sinistar. I hunger. And it would chase you around very deliberately. Yeah, I remember that trying one. Trying to kill you. I remember that one. And what, was that for an arcade? I think it was an arcade, but I, I never know if it got a home release. Hmm. But it became infamous just for those words, I, hunger, <laughs> run, coward. <laughs> oh, boys. By today's standards, that horror seems pretty tame. But when you're playing and you feel a sense of powerlessness to stop this thing, yeah, it gets can be kind of scary. True that, true that. And, okay, uh, I, we're kind of over the place, so let's try to focus on video game story that we enjoy. Like, do you have a ah. specific story that you enjoy, Silver? Oh, Metal Gear Solid, the very first one. The first one? Yes. Ah. Well, okay, I guess there was Metal Gear on the Nintendo, but I'm talking Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation. All right. Uh, the start of that particular saga. And... Uh, I was just blown away by the characterization, the events, the drama. It was like, this was a whole new level of storytelling for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you remember uh, Psycho Mantis? Oh, yes. I remember I remember plugging, it, moving the controller to the second port and accidentally hitting the reset button while I did it. <laughs> oh. All right, was... was was Metal Gear on the play- PS1 or PS2? Uh, Metal Gear, the first Metal Gear Solid was on the PlayStation 1. Okay. 
Because I remember playing, I must have been playing on the PS2 because that's how I could, that's the only way I could have hit the reset button. Mm, mm, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the PlayStation 1 had these big old buttons that you couldn't accidentally hit unless you were trying to. Not just blind, but horribly uncoordinated. True. Oh, by the way, uh, the PlayStation 1 Classic is coming out this December? Something like that? Uh, the Classics consoles, I've seen the criticisms, including too short, a uh, controller cord, not enough room, or, best of all, you can't add more games. Well, that's for the Nintendo that... or for Sony's one? Because Sony's one, they uh, reveal five titles for now, and that's Final Fantasy VII, Taken Three. Uh, Legend of Mana, something like that, I don't remember. But still, there's a few good titles. There are, but people want the option to add more good titles. And that's the real question. Mm, all right. You were saying about Metal Gear, Silva? Just that it was it was a big step up in terms... It felt like I was playing a movie in a in a fun, interactive way. Not like those quick-time event monstrosities from the uh, Sega CD oh, era. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. This was a genuine... I felt like I was in control of a movie. A movie with a lot of intermissions because I would die. <laughs> so wait, this and it would be like snake, snake. <laughs> so wait, this is your favorite story, or one of one yours? of my favorites? Yes. Mm. All right. So that's for you and for me. I I have to really think about it because I don't quite remember most of the stories. But if I were to say one of my favorite stories for video games. When I was young, I would say Mega Man X4, or specifically Rockman X4. It was in Japanese. I got no idea what I was doing, but the animated scenes were cool. Yeah. Then you pop in the English, and oh my god, the bad voice acting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's legendary. Oh god. I- I'm glad that nowadays voice acting in video games is taken more seriously. <laughs> And yet, without that, we wouldn't be able to have all your bases are belong to us. Oh, true, that too. That's bad translation, by the way. Indeed it is. But it was kind of funny still. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's from our younger days. What about recently? Like, any video game stories that sparked your interest in today's modern age within the 2016 to now or kind of recent? Oh, Spider-Man. Oh, really? Since I just boasted about platinum it. Platinum. Ing it. That's a weird verb. <laughs> plat it, baby. Plat it, baby. Plat it to me, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's a platitude. Uh, we're so white. All the girls say I'm pretty fly for a white guy. <laughs> oh, nice. So, what about Spider-Man do you like? Like, obviously, it's a um, comic book tie-in, but how's the story, by the way? The story, I think, is really well done. They establish the characters. They have escalation. It comes together at the end, although I will say because most of the supervillains are at the end, a lot a lot of the stuff is mostly gang combat. So you're superpowered beating up on the gang members. And I think that works well, but there's a part of me like, hey, I really want to fight someone with a little bit more, you know, power, or more grit. And then you beat the game and you're like, okay, now I can go back to just beating up gang members, and it's almost comical how easy it is now. <laughs> Used to be, oh, I've, that's a big gang of guys. I've got to be careful on how I approach this. Hey, it's a big game of, it's a big gang of guys. Web bomb. <laughs> Pulse bomb. Good, you're all stuck to the wall. <laughs> nice. Uh, but I, I don't think that but, um, pull you away from the immersion, right? Oh, no. Oh, goodness. Here's my question, the greatest critique I can have of this game. Why on earth would anyone invent a fast travel system? You get to web something through New York. Why would you want to fast travel and skip that? No. Because maybe no. they are rushing and they need to do it ASAP and whatnot, or probably, who knows? Whatever the good people of Russia need to do is their own business, but I will prefer the web slugging. <laughs> all right, all right. But what... See the Russian, ha, 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 ha. Oh, you. Uh, how about God of War? You played that one recently. Oh, yes, boy. (laughs) Boy. Yay. Boy, come here and help me save the world, boy. Oh, wait, it's me. We're actually trying to end the world, boy. But honestly, that was a lot of fun. Like, God of War, that was a lot of fun. And and it's actually interesting, the discussion it uh, generated. Because there are people who were like, oh, everyone who's saying that Kratos is, is more 
human, more understandable, more more sympathetic. They point to events in the mostly in the PlayStation uh, portable games. <laughs> okay. Or is it the do they call it the Vita? It's been a while since I I played a PSP. All right. And here's the thing they've never addressed. In the previous in the previous games, especially the ones that fill in the gaps between the the main God of War entries, it usually features Kratos dealing with familial relations. The thing is, it's hard to sympathize with the guy when there's this mountain of innocent people killed behind him. <laughs> the dude builds up mountains of corpses. And it's like, I can't really feel sorry that you're having a bad time with your brother when you killed an entire continent. <laughs> but at the same time, too, from what I understand about the God of War series, uh, all of them have different directors. So the stories were all over the place. The characteristics are inconsistent. They are, but at the same time, it usually follows that Kratos kills everything and everyone. By the end of God of War, there's hardly a person left standing that he's met. By the third God of War, even that doesn't apply because he pretty much wrecked everybody. Yeah, true, 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 true. You know what? For me personally, God of War, the PS4 version, is kind of a redemption arc or redemption story for Kratos because every time if you... Okay, uh, spoilers for God of War 4. If you have not played it and interested in playing it, pause here and kind of skip about, I say, two minutes or something like that. Three minutes to be safe, yes. Uh, okay, so in the whole story, when every every time when somebody points something out to Kratos about his past and his demons and how would he reveal it to his son, he just calls the boy, sit down and explain. Okay, that guy you saw back there in my flashback or whatever, that's my dad. I killed him, yes. I was a very bad, bad man before and you should not be like that. It took him a while though. That was only at the game's end. Yeah, but still, he... Like, you would have thought that, oh, he's going to keep it from him forever until the second God of War on the PlayStation 4 and whatever it is. But, oh, no, no. He just told him right out there. Hmm, yeah. Well, and then they spoil the end of the saga with, with the uh, panels that they unearth <laughs> or they discover yeah. predicting the, f the future. It's like, okay, Atreus, have you ever been to Egypt? I think they've got some gods that need killing. <laughs> Oh, boys. Oh, talking about Egypt, right? Talking about Egypt. Oh, you go the video game? <laughs> I would love to go there, but um, no, I'm going to talk about Overwatch. So, Ah, Overwatch. Oh, well, you, you, recently made a <laughs> you recently made a video about it, too. So, yeah, go catch out Silver's recent video about the uh, Warrior Archetype, was it? Yee. Yeah, go check it out. It's really a fun watch. So, anyway, um, Overwatch is mostly a multiplayer uh, shooter or multiplayer team-based shooter. So there's no real story behind it, but except that there is. And the way that Blizzard roll out the story here is pretty interesting. They have a simple backstory, and mostly you can get the story on their YouTube page, or their comics or whatever it is, and that's how you get the lore. But besides that, sometimes in-game, one character talk to another character, and you'll get pictures of information that way too. To me, Overwatch way of telling story is pretty interesting, but in all honesty, it's really bad. It does raise the question: Why are they all gathering to save the world, and then they're just escorting a limo? <laughs> yeah, you know what? There's there's a story there. I mean, besides level design or whatever it is, the the story is not really that good or stable because I really want to know why this is happening, why certain characters are interacting with other characters. For A good example is uh, Soldier 76 and Reaper. They have a rivalry, they have a bad pass, and they're kind of enemies. Or uh, what happened to Doomfist? Or even May? And so on. I mean, there's potential for a story there, but man, I, I do wish that we get more lore soon. Well, it'll be in the form of more CG, more comics. They did not too long ago release a diva cinematic. And that was awesome. It was. It was nice to see her in a more positive light because up until now, she's just been the gamer. This one showed a bit more noble spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know what? I heard rumors that Blizzard is interested in making a CG movie for Overwatch. So who knows, right? Not a lot of movies based on video games go well. Mm -hmm, yes, that's true. 
But there are some good ones. I'll point to Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie when it first came out. Mm-hmm. But you look back at it now, it, it is quite silly. Oh, it is. It's quite but silly. But it's good. Right, quite silly. Get on with it. Get on with it. <laughs> you are a silly man. If you want silly, Death Street Fighter, the movie, starring John Paul Van Damme. Oh, heavens. Oh, but then who, who played M. Bison? Uh, Raul Julia. Well, it, one of I believe that was his final role and uh, before his untimely death. And uh, he's mostly famous for, it also lifts me. <laughs> I mean, he, he gave that 110%. Oh, yeah. He was awesome. He knows he's in cheese, so he's just gonna he's gonna be just brie all he can brie. Yeah, I mean he did it out of the love for his children. Like he wanted to make a movie for their kids, and I think their kids said, "Oh, Dad, you should do this one." And yeah, and sometimes I think the best video game movie just accepts its cheesiness. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, right? Like um, off topic for a bit about our main storyline here. <laughs> Get it? Sorry. Ah. Uh-huh. E? Prince of Persia, that was not a bad video game movie. It wasn't that good. Uh, that's true. And Rampage. That's true. I guess I kind of forget that one. I haven't seen Rampage. Okay, Rampage is... Well, okay. Purists out there who love the franchise would say that it's a betrayal. Betrayal. Betrayed me. But in all honesty, as an action movie with big giant monsters, it did well. Well, I'm glad for that. I mean, Dwayne Johnson, he can start some pretty bad stuff and still make it fun. Oh, yeah, Doom. <laughs> oh, Doom. Well, there's a video game. <laughs> well, that one, that didn't get anything right. Yeah. <laughs> We're on Mars, okay. People are being turned into monsters, okay. There's no mention of heaven or hell. Yep. <laughs> Who are the producers on this? <laughs> Extremely religious people. Well, there's your first problem. Yep. Oh, boys. Be... BFG, we know what it's supposed to stand for, and it's not that. <laughs> it's big freaking gun. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, except the freak replace the freaking with a <laughs> little stronger word. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to invite invite the sweetie bot. <laughs> but still, um, sometimes some video game movies can be a shining star, or it could be a pile of crap. Yes. Is baby, you're a firework. Yep. Oh, God. Talking about... Okay. Does Yu-Gi-Oh! movie count, or does even the Pokemon movie count as video games? I'm going to say no, because they're based off the anime, which was made to sell said games. And so, really, it takes more from the anime than it does from the games. Oh, okay, okay. So... That, Even with the, that awful Dungeon Dice Monsters, or no, Capsule Monsters. Uh, yeah, it's DDM, That's it. Dungeon Dice Monsters. Oh, the pain, and yet strangely arousing. Let me guess, you watched some video about why DDM failed. No, I didn't see that. I uh, I only just watched the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge series. Oh, okay. In fact, I was re-watching that. <laughs> nice. Was was re-watching his uh, Abridgment of Season Zero, <laughs> where he has... Tay is singing firework, <laughs> and then Yugi lights a guy on fire. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, uh, getting back on track, getting back on track. Like, okay. <laughs> um, video game movies, yes. Uh, sorry, video games and whatnot, yes. But bad video game story, does it exist? Oh, of course. Uh, although, now that now you're putting me on the spot, what was the worst video game story I ever played? Weren't a lot because I would just not play them. Mm, true. If I didn't. Oh, <laughs> Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. Is there a story? <laughs> Technically. Okay, yeah. Zach, Razor, Zach created an island and invited all the DOA babes to come on his island and play volleyball and water sports and whatnot. And yeah, I remember what, that's one of the reasons I bought an original Xbox. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm cheating a little and just looking on uh, on bad video game stories. Right. So let's see here. According to Complex.com, Double Dragon. Oh, Double Dragon. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I'll just read this. I'll just read this verbatim. Okay, we're going to start off this list with what very well could be the greatest video game intro in history. 
A woman gets punched in the stomach, thrown over shoulder, and taken off screen. Hmm. And while brilliant in its simplicity, bad guy steals girlfriend, me bake, me break bad guy's face. Hmm. It's also a pretty weak reason for a guy and his brother to go off on an adventure of beating up bad guys on the streets in, in a cave to death. <laughs> Has he ever heard of calling the police? No? Oh, okay. Then carry on with your punching <laughs> jump kicks, fine, sir. Plus, again, the whole will... Uh, w- the girl will instantly date whoever beats up the other guy. So, way to be independent, young lady. <laughs> Yay. Blaster Master. Uh, this game always confused me because it starts with you going underground to pick to find your pet toad who grew giant oh. and then but all of a sudden then you have this this rolling <clears throat> tank that can transform into a hovercraft and you go into dungeons to kill these giant monsters like from the depths of hell it looks like and you're like this was all about getting my toad back what is going on i think that's something to do with the translation <laughs> But I'm uh, scrolling through my, what you might call this, uh, game library on Steam and trying to look for some semblance of a bad video game story. And you know, honestly, I don't have one. Like, I think I play good games. Ooh, Superman 64. Oh, God. So, okay. What's with Superman 64 then? Well, it had no true story. It had no fun gameplay. It was... Regarded as one of the worst video games of all time. <laughs> Mostly because it's just Superman fly through some rings. Oh, watch Superman fly through rings. Yes, this is what I think of when I watch Superman flying through rings. Da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. <laughs> this is a game about Superman. <laughs> watch him go fly through rings. <laughs> all right, then. But you know what? Bad video game story. I, I can't find any. Like I, I know they exist. Okay, what about cheesy stories then? Oh, uh, well, cheesy. Oh, cheesy at the wazoo. Uh, most Japanese RPGs <laughs> to yeah. be incredibly cheesy. True, true. Devil May Cry had uh, cheesy. I should have been one of the failure saw with lie, <laughs> lie, lie. <laughs> Oh, why did you bring us DMC Silver? Were you were you watching the best friends play? Oh, I just remember it fondly. <laughs> I will say there was Prince of Persia, the one where it's he and the princess. Oh, that one. Um, the newest uh, prince. Yep. Where basically at the end, you know what? I'm gonna spoil this, folks, because it's not worth playing. The ending completely undoes everything. Ends on a downer. Is trying to sequel bait. Oh yeah, and it was so poorly received that they never made the sequel. Oh yeah, it's not only that because uh, if you bought the original Prince of Persia, uh, this is the uh, PlayStation Three Xbox version. Uh, they didn't really give you a proper ending. Like you need to buy the DLC to get the proper ending. Yeah, it's just uh... bad all around. Bad all around. But uh, well, that's. That, see, even Silver's angry, hating deaths out of rage. Bah. <laughs> bah. Uh-huh. But in my head, right? Like, I, I think when we talk about video game story, like we 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 kind of uh, don't notice the fighting games because who who really pays attention to stories in fighting games? But sometimes fighting games have a lot of really good uh, stories in them. That's been a more recent thing. Uh, in my eyes. That's good. I was always an oddball because I, I did play fighting games wanting to see the character endings and understand the story behind this tournament. Why is everyone here? Why is everyone beating each other up? And usually the, the story was just sort of a flimsy pretense for uh, to get everyone in a fighting game and have them be as bizarre as possible. <laughs> true, true. I will say Mortal Kombat probably had the best storyline because they went all out. It's like other world uh, invasion. We're the defending. We're the defenders. This tournament will will protect the universe. It's like wow, really? You're talking about the newer Mortal Kombat, right? Yes. Mm, yes. Yes. Actually, I'm thinking Mortal Kombat two originally. When you find out about Outworld or no other world, is it Outworld or other world? Outworld, because the it takes place in Outworld. You have like trees that are roaring at you. 
vaunt bloody pits of, of killed off slaves, this tournament where fighters from the previous game are now chained in the auditorium. Like, what? whoa, there's a whole thing going on here. And some guy at the corner there saying, Posty! Posty! Who is that guy? Uh, one of the game does. you, Ed Boon. <laughs> yeah, Ed Boon. <laughs> but then uh, the new Mortal Kombat's oh, came out, the ones that did the reboot. That was awesome. MK9 was awesome. And yeah, now they have an actual story mode. Okay, I'm not great at video games in their their chains. So suddenly, oh my gosh, uh, I can watch it on YouTube. Oh yeah, all of these cutscenes, an unfolding story, and it's I think really well done. True, true, and especially um, MK, how MK did it. Like they really went out and beyond with how they did it, and even uh, Street Fighter Five and how its story mode came out pretty late they emulated that like that was good till somebody else wanted to copy it so i don't mind it because hey this is a formula that works and i and i think other people should follow through do you agree i do of course i'll always I'll always be partial to shao Kahn of the first of the second Mortal Kombat game <clears throat> as a boss because no matter how silly the story of course you're gonna want to beat up a guy who says you suck <laughs> Uh, yeah. You weak, pathetic fool. Uh, well, yeah. Still, still. But in all honesty, uh, when it comes to fighting game story, I think, Silver, you would like The King of Fighters. Because that game there, oh my goodness, it had a storyline and it went long. It, it ran really long. I, I played one King of Fighters, but it always just seemed to be ending cutscenes. And... Uh, yeah, how do they put it? It's like. I'm trying to remember. Really, I'm trying to really remember how I know the storyline for the King of Fighters, and that could be supplementary from comics to reading info online. And SNK likes to do info drops on their games, like oh, go to our website to read the article and stuff. And I think uh-huh. that follows through to Overwatch too. And yeah, they're, they're doing what Overwatch did, or so on. Yeah, but in all honesty. It was really interesting, but it's very hard to digest because you need to go to multiple places, and that's no fun. Uh, yeah, I'm never a big fan of when they're like, uh, you have to stop playing the game, go to this website, and look up the information and understand. Thanks, Destiny. <laughs> oh, well. And No, I stop making me s- stop playing your game to look up the story to enjoy your game. That doesn't work. Uh, but um, you, you mentioned something earlier on. And watching Let's Play on YouTube. And I think you turned me on to something, Silver, way back when. And that was Neep Games with Subnautica. Ah, yes. Especially the Neebs yeah. gaming, where the lead character is on, call, on hold with tech support as he tries to get off this, this uh, water planet. Yeah, and to give a, uh, what you would call this, description to the audience, uh, Subnautica is a survival game where... You need to survive on this planet and do your best to go back home. It's te- it's technically a sandbox game. You're there, go farm and stuff, and yeah, try to play. There's no real story in there, was it Silver? Oh, there is a story. Uh, you be- you become infected with an alien disease that has wiped out mi- billions, and. Basically, the entire goal of the game, because it does have an ending, is that you must traverse this water planet, survive all its various creatures, and then find the cure, which I won't say how one does that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I saw a video recently that talked about how they crafted horror within Subnautica, because you get into some of the darker depths, and there are some freaky creatures there, most of them trying to eat you. (laughs) True, true. But um, back to Neeps Gaming's, because the story of Subnautica wasn't really existent. It wasn't really there in your face. You kind of need to read all the diagrams and whatnot. And the good folks at Neeps Gaming kind of created their own, uh, what you would call this, story? Not really story, but... Um, Roleplay? Roleplay is one word, but I'm looking for another word where they created their own... Well, let's just say they created their own story. If I remember the word, I remember the word. If not, not. So they created their own scenario. Yes. Was it? Yeah. Anyway, they created their own scenario 
with the main character kind of going out of his mind. And you know what? Let's do the whole tech support thing. Oh, that'll be fun. Yay! And from that point on, to me, that's Subnautica story where you're a guy <laughs> trapped on an alien planet full of water and you have your only best friend who is the tech support guy. <laughs> who may, in fact, be... Uh... Who may just be in your head. That be that would have been a funny twist. <laughs> but come on. Everybody, including the lazy guy who works at the pizza store. Oh, boy. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> just like, wait, this is what my imagination cooked up? Oh, that's so lame. Uh, but still. Um, yeah, but I, I think sometimes let's player do that. Like, they enhance certain game and enhance certain stories. I'm not a big uh, Minecraft guy, but I do know that some Minecrafters would create stories for their world and whatnot. They would. Well, I have to describe this. Some games now rely on the whole, oh, we'll just provide a setting, but you have to dream up your own story for your own character. That was a thing for Destiny. Oh, God. And I don't think that works so well. I, I don't know. I mean, that could be fun. Because, okay, we plop you down here and you go have fun. It's, okay, you mentioned Destiny, but wow, how, what do you think about World of Warcraft? Ah, uh, the phenomena that I have never really jumped into. It always seems like you're just an observer to events rather than an active participant. So there's a story there. There are characters, to be sure. I've watched some of the uh, CG cinematics. But in terms of... A story where you feel like you are a, a, a key participant. I don't sense that. Other people who have actually played the game may have a different perspective. But to me, it's just like I'm watching events unfold. I don't feel like I'm having an active role in how they take shape. Hmm. All right. I feel that sometimes certain games are there just to, you know, play the game. And the story is not really that important. And you know what? I've been on the Magic the Gathering kick for a while now. And that happens in Magic the Gathering where the game is more important than the story. And you're probably wondering, Magic the Gathering has a story? Yes, Magic the Gathering has a story. And it's a really interesting story. If you're really into it, there's novels about it and whatnot. And the flavor text on the cards are there too. Because, well, there's backstories and whatnot and uh the recent booster that's coming out now or soon uh guild of guild uh, guild of ravnica is going back to a previous world that was visited in the past but with how magic gathering story rebooted i'm not 100 percent sure it's complicated but anywho magic gathering has a story and it's really interesting I'm not 100% sure where you go to read the whole story. Probably on their website. Yeah. Not sure myself. I know Yu-Gi-Oh! They have some, in Japan, they had something called Dual Terminal. Oh, God, no. Which told a story based on uh, several archetypes within the game. Silver. Such Silver. as the Worms and the Allies of Justice. Yes. yes, yes. Uh, Silver, in all honesty, right? I I'll break it down to you yeah. <laughs> about that. Um, yes, in Japan... They had the dual terminals, and the dual terminals are one of those things that you can find in arcades where you pop in a card, you play the game and whatnot. It was three, six, uh, six circles rather than your usual ten. But because of how things are and the way that they do things over there, it's uh, I remember way back when you can get one really good synchro monster called Trishula. And that's the only way to get it back then. And people ah. spent a lot of coins just to get that card. And it's random, and you've got no idea where. And yeah, it's, they just put on coins and don't play the game. They just get a card, pay, put a coin, get a card, put a coin, get a card. And they don't really, uh, what you might call this, play or get no the normal story. And that's the sad part there, because even if there's a story over there, it's not well known. It's Let's just say it's an arcade machine where, hey, that's be me and Jimmy. Oh, that's just disappointing. I know. And the sad part is that, oh, Trishula has been reprinted in multiple reprints. <sighs> I remember way back when that card in, your, in its original form cost about 500 ringgit. Oh, Lord. I know. 
It was really good. I don't even know. I don't know the okay. monetary conversion. Let me see if there, I can but... get you the conversion. Give me a second, eh? Uh, continue on with uh, what we were thinking, Silva. Well, just that I never can hang into a game that doesn't have a story. Heck, th- I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a good long time, but that was because there was the anime Yu-Gi-Oh! There was the story. And <clears throat> honestly, I was always sort of disappointed when I realized, hey, the main character's decks are usually terrible. Yep. Usually they can't do any good. Why would you play? He pl- <laughs> he plays Swordsman of Landstar. <laughs> unironically. <laughs> I had Mushroom Man in my deck. <laughs> mushroom Man. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And by the way, Silver, um, uh, back then, Trishula was $121. Good gravy. Japan, the old terminal print. But yeah, uh, oh, that's ju- that's just painful. But um, you know, honestly, Silver, uh, the Dark Magician deck built right now is much more stronger. But the Blue Eyes, oh, sadly, no, cannot. no, no, Silver. There was a time, I think, around 2016, where the Blue Eyes White Dragon deck was considered meta. Oh uh, well, we're well past that oh, time. Yeah, we were well past that time, and that deck was all over the place when we were not playing. Ugh. It's so sad. But anyway. Back onto the video games, and I think we're at our limit here. But you know, honestly, I do like some video game stories because it carries a good story. Um, for example, LA Noir. LA Noir was a fun adventure where you're a police officer raising up the ranks and trying to bust crimes. That was fun, really fun. Have you played that, Silver? I have not. I'm in a recessive time of playing video games. Spider-Man was a, a rare breakout for me. Mm. Before that, I think it was Doom, Doom. that I really got wow. into. And Doom Doom actually had a story. Mostly, it was like in between busting heads. I remember the main character, a uh, Doom guy, was kind of... Sh- uh, oh, sh- I can't hear you. You can turn off mic. <laughs> well, mostly people love him for the physicality he by which he conveys his character. Uh... I'm talking about the new, the, the latest Doom game, soon to be sequeled in Doom Eternal, which has any... Okay, you want to talk about stories, we can now tell stories about how games upset people on the internet. <laughs> oh, God, please do share. Well, okay, the, the Doom Eternal reveal. While you're playing... While <laughs> demons have overrun Earth, there is uh, some sort of holographic guide encouraging people saying... Earth is the melting pot of the universe. Demon may be offensive. Please refer to these creatures as the mortally impaired. <laughs> and a lot of people take umbrage at that. Really? <laughs> oh my goodness. They don't even see the irony there. Well, they see it as a direct insult against immigration or PC culture. Yeah, the PC culture. Because goodness knows we can't we can't have a sense of humor about ourselves. Oh, yeah. It's it's literally making fun of you guys who are uh, <laughs> complaining about that. Like that's the irony there. You you fell right <laughs> hook line and sinker. <laughs> irony. <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I don't even play Doom and I find that hilarious in more ways than one. Well, it's interesting. Take I will look forward to seeing Doom Eternal hit hit the shelves. And then I will bust some demon nice, heads. Nice. So, rah, 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 Silver, rah, rah. do you buy your game physical or digital? Physical. I've always liked to have a tangible, tangible product. Ah, all right. This whole digital thing, especially when now it's being revealed, game companies can just say, "Oh yeah, we are not, we're not allowing that online anymore." Oh yeah. But I paid money for it. Yeah, we're keeping. That. Isn't that with iTunes and what it did recently? Probably. Yeah, because I remember something about uh, iTunes retracting one of their movies and this guy bought the movie and can't play it anymore and iTunes says, well, sorry, he has a gift card. <laughs> gift card. Yeah, that's crap still. Indeed. In all honesty, I haven't been really playing that much video games besides Magic the Gathering and I don't really play for the story. I just play for the cool effects I can do. Oh, like you said, we all find ways to play. We all find reasons to play. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, you know, I did think I did finally realize the games that have the worst stories. Oh. It's the ones based on movies. Ah, yes, LGN. The uh, Battleship. <laughs> uh, Wait, no, no, that was a bad You're one. You're talking about movie movie based on video games or games based on movies? Games based on movies. Wait, there's a ga- Battleship it, game movie thingy game. There was a Battleship the movie. So they made a video game, which is bare bones. Wow. Not at all fun. Uh, Angry Joe had a period where he was reviewing nothing but uh, game ad- movie adaptation uh, games. Yeah. And they were all very poorly done, hastily put together. And the stories were pretty bland because they were just trying to cash in on the movies. Yeah. It's why Spider-Man 2 was such a shock to everyone. Yeah, I, I remember uh, playing, what was it, back in the days? It was a movie tying game. Yeah, it was a movie tying game, but it was really good. Uh, it was called X Men Origins Wolverine. It, that, uh, that, well, I never played that. That game was awesome. Like, I don't think you can get it anymore. If you go to the, what you call this, um, eBay games or whatever store you have and try to find that game, it's a really good game. Uh, it stars Wolverine, and the gameplay is awesome. Like, I will highly recommend people go get that as part of the collection. Ooh, there you go. We have an endorsement. Pay us, Sony. No, uh, that was Marvel and uh, Activision was at the time. Yeah, so I think it was Marvel. Right? But play it on the PlayStation. Pay us, Sony. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, still. But anyway, uh, we, we've been running almost an hour now. And Silver, is there anything you want to add in? No, just that I enjoy a good story. And even the most innocent of games can actually have a really good story. Even just a, a fun or silly story. I'm thinking Banjo-Kazooie. Mm, yes, Banjo-Kazooie is a good one. But but it's got to be a combo of fun gameplay and a good story. Because otherwise, if it's just a good story with bad gameplay, it becomes a slog to get from one point to another. And you'll press skip the and, story. <laughs> at which point I just go to YouTube and watch all the cutscenes. <laughs> yes. Uh, but no... Okay, Silver, which one is important for you? Uh, gameplay first, then story, or story, then gameplay? I'll say story, then gameplay. Story, then gameplay, all right. But it's a very close, intertwined relationship. Uh, are you a fan of Devil May Cry? You know, I never really got into it. Hmm. But I've watched some of the cutscenes, and I can see why people have fun. Except for that reboot where he has black hair. <laughs> Don't take <laughs> Now, in all honesty, I am a fan of Devil May Cry. I, I love Devil May Cry. Uh, it was one of the few games that spurred me to get a PlayStation 2. And that game was awesome. How do I put this? Devil May Cry is one of those games where you play and you feel really badass. And Dante, he's the kind of badass that doesn't swear, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. He's cool that way and he's badass and don't they is no just don't don't play no no, no honestly okay the dmc devil may cry it's not a bad game in terms of its design but its story and character is just trash mm. people who like devil may cry like it for the system and how you play the game with its combos and style that's how People who like that game play the game. And especially anything that Hideki Kimiya made, it has that feel. Even to Bayonetta. And Bayonetta is awesome. I think that is the title that will push me to get a Nintendo Switch. Because Bayonetta 3. Like, I must get it because Bayo on the new system. I need to play more Bayo. Because Bayo's hot. Yeah. Well, there you go. But for now... Yep, it's good. To, it's good to have a fun story to entice you to get to the next stage of gameplay. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. And a good system or good, well, gameplay design is also good too. Like you do not want to play a very bad controlled game while having good stories. It'll be like not having your cake and eat it. Not having your cake and eat it. I don't think that's possible. You could, I think it's have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, but if it's good story and bad game design, you won't get that. Ha <laughs> ha. You get a very bitter, bitter yes. cake. <laughs> uh, I it, think it, it's salty. <laughs> salty cake. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But before we end, I got to ask you, Silver, 
any game in particular that you're excited for? I heard Red Dead's coming. Um, what else is coming? You said Doom Eternal. So any upcoming game Do- that you're excited for? Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. So that's the only one? As far as I know, yes. All right. And as for me, uh, Devil May Cry 5. I can't wait to play that one, man. Like That is so exciting. Oh, and Mega Man 10. Mega Man 10 is coming out next month. There you go. Yep. So, anywho, um, for next week's thing, I guess more pony episodes. Uh, I think there's one on the um, back burner that we already recorded. So, that just needs to be edited and posted. So, yay. This one is kind of an unexpected uh, recording. One thing that to another and yeah, whatever it was. So, anywho, uh, next week will be ponies. So, yay. Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themysterygmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the Mirror Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on the YouTubes. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact. I also post on DeviantArts under MLP-Silver-Quill, uh, where you can find Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics every Friday before a new episode. Thankfully, we're past all the early release episodes because I am tired. <laughs> and you can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday where I post either a comic review or an editorial. Awesome, awesome. And yeah, no wonder your latest Pinky Pie Say Goodnight comic was Spider-Man. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was the script? And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and switch to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Links are in the show notes. And yeah, subscribe to this episode here or this show here on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You get this and many more. Yay. Everything will be in the show notes link. Link if you do. Yes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank myself, Lag. Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Burger Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show Ready Player One. Run, coward! Rawr! It's-a me, I'm Mario! I'm an offensive stereotype! <laughs>